Good morning, saints. Let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Um, stand if you like, or stay seated if you like. Lord, we just come before you and ask your blessing over this service, Lord. Be with us and encourage us and guide us in all we do. And Lord, be with Pastor Rick as he brings the word today. And uh, just work through him, Lord, and use his tongue and his mouth and his mind to encourage and instruct us. And Lord, just we ask your blessing over this day and over our week, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, announcements for today. The first thing I want to do is embarrass Sue. Her birthday was Friday. <laughs> so tell her happy birthday. I asked Terry a little bit ago how the two of them got their birthdays so close together. They're like within a week or just barely over a week of each other. Um, next Saturday on the 26th at 3 p.m. is a cornhole tournament at Lawrence Park. This is sponsored by Shine Bright Church. Uh, it's $20 per team or $10 per player, and they'll team you up with somebody else. Uh, they will have trophies. And uh, Wednesday night I announced if there's a couple people want to form a team, I'll take care of your fee for you if you can't afford it or whatever. Uh, probably one or two teams I, I'll personally sponsor. Uh, you can give giving online with the church app, or if you're here, then the box is there in the middle as soon as announcements are done. Uh, prayer is Wednesday at 6 p.m. by Zoom. There's posters in the foyer in the back on the Zoom. Or if you're at home, you can contact, who's got the Zoom meeting though? Contact Pastor Danny and he's got the, the, the link. Uh, on October 3rd at 7.30 a.m., we're gonna have, do some work on the grounds in the building. Uh, if you'd like to volunteer, just show up. Or if you wanna talk to Tom or Paul ahead of time to see what's needed as far as equipment and such, you can do that. Um, on the 10th of October, there's the More of God, Less of Me conference, uh, Lessons from the Life of John the Baptist at Shine Bright Church. And we have one more announcement, mostly for the teachers and for the kids. Today, the playground is open. So you still have to stay in classroom until the teacher dismisses you, but you will be able to use the playground from now on. Uh, our people got, finally got it all cleaned up from lack of use and the different things we, issues we had, and uh, we'll keep it maintained now. So the kids, you're back to the playground again. Um, I think that's all the announcements, unless somebody else has something else. So at this time, we'll dismiss the kids and the youth up to the trailer. Pastor Danny's going to be with the youth. Um, I'm getting hand signals from Rick. Oh, greet each other, either from afar or whatever. <laughs> so that gives him time to transition up here. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and make our way back to our seats, and we're going to get started. Obviously, you know, we didn't have a, a worship today, but I hope you came with worship in your hearts, um, ready to receive of God's word. Amen. So let's just start off in, uh, in prayer. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity that you give me, Lord God, to be able to be a, a, a platform, Lord Jesus, to preach the gospel. 
and to share your word, Lord. And today's teaching, Lord, I pray that it would minister to those that are not only in this place, but are also watching online, Lord, and uh, whoever would watch it in the future, Lord God. God, our ultimate goal is to be in you, to abide in you. And Lord, we're going to learn some of these truths today, Lord, as you have uh, called it out on in your word, as we are in the book of John, Lord. Um, we look to you, God, for guidance. We look to you for the power of your Holy Spirit to work in us, Lord, every day. Help us to be more and more like you. We ask this in your name. Father, we ask that your spirit would minister to us, Lord, this morning. Your servants are listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are going to be in the book of John. We're in chapter 15. So please take out your Bibles and turn to the book of John, chapter 15. Um, last week we were in chapter 14, just finishing things up. And in chapter 14, uh, Jesus is talking about, you know, the helper that's going to come. Amen. The helper, as we know, as being the Holy Spirit and also teaches us in how to operate, how to live our lives and the things that we need to do in order to live uh, a fruitful life. Amen. And today we're going to continue in the next chapter, which is 15. And uh, I've titled this message Abide. Amen. Um, Abide. So let's go to John chapter 15, and we're going to read from verses 1 through 8, and then we're going to take a look at each verse. Um, amen. So it says here, John chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true vine, this is Jesus speaking, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he says, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. And he says, abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. But if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you desire and that shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you may bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. So this illustration here, it's self-explanatory, I believe. God the Father is the vine dresser, the one who cultivates the vineyard in order to produce an abundant harvest. Amen. Jesus is the vine, the thick trunk that runs along the arbor. We are the branches, those smaller vines that grow out of the main vine. Where is the Holy Spirit in this illustration? His presence is in the vine. Jesus has already um, promised the Holy Spirit to His disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He is the power from on high, He says. In the vine, the Holy Spirit is the power of God, the Father coming to the branches, helping them to bear fruit. In the vineyard illustration, the Holy Spirit is what comes through the vine and is in the the branches which produce the fruit. Amen. So we as the branches are called to bear fruit. Amen. How many of you guys are fruit bearers? Now, we bear fruit regardless of what type of fruit it is. Amen. Some may bear good fruit, which we are called to do so. Amen. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, it is a command that you bear fruit. Amen. But there are also those that bear bad fruit. Amen. And as we know, bad fruit is spoiled. It, it's, it's really good for nothing. Amen. But it also says that we'll be pruned so that we can bear more fruit. Amen. We in Christ over our lifetime should bear much fruit as Jesus sums that 
last uh, two verses up here in uh, verses 7 and 8. We are called to bear much fruit. Not just to bear fruit, amen, but to bear much fruit. Which kind of branch are you? Which kind of branch do you want to be? Are our lives nothing like Christ? Somewhat like Christ? Pretty much like Christ? Or a mirror image of Christ? Let's see how the vine dresser works in each of these situations. So if we are bearing no fruit, what does that mean? Someone that does not bear fruit, it can mean one of two things here. Either we are not attached to the vine at all, or our attachment to the vine has in some way been blocked so that the sap isn't flowing into us. It may be that there is someone here this morning who has no attachment to Christ. You have never received Him into your life. You've never asked Him to be your personal Lord and Savior. And I would urge you this morning that you attach yourself to Him by faith. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 12 says, But as many as receive Him to them, He gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in His name. So we're called to receive, to believe by faith in the One who gave His life for us. Amen. Because the branches that remain unattached, the gardener takes away. And as Jesus said in verse 6, he says, If anyone does not abide in me, he says, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and they throw them into the fire and they're burned. But it may be that you are attached to Christ, but you've been going through a period of time of fruitlessness or a dry season. You know, we use those terms in church. You know, it's just a dry season right now. You know, but how, how long have you been in that dry season? And why are you in that dry season? Some of us may be in a dry season because we've failed at some point in ministry or uh, in our relationship with others in the way we, we treat others, or it, it, can, it can be a, a, you know, a variety of different things that cause us to be fruitless. It doesn't negate the fact that you, know, you, you love God. You may genuinely love God with your, you know, with your heart. You may feel like this sense of, uh, you know, of love for Him because of what He's done for you, but you find yourself fruitless. You find yourself not producing fruit. Now, we use those terms because Jesus, he, he uses these terms in Scripture to give us a pretty a, a good, clear illustration of what something looks like, right, in a plant. Like, a, you know, I have a, a grapevine in the back that produced fruit in the beginning, but because I didn't take the time to go and, and prune that thing and, and find out how to care for it, you know, it still gets green, but it produces no fruit. It's still, I know it's a, a, it's a grapevine, but there's never any grapes on it. You know, and that can be the same for many Christians. Many of those that profess to be followers of Christ. You're in church, but you're producing no fruit. You call yourself a Christian, but there's no fruit in the evidence to back it up. And that's a danger to be in that place, especially if that's the place where kind of it's lingering and it's been happening for a while. And I think for many of those of us that sense that time where we're in that dry season, you know, we recognize it. But what are we doing to get out of it? You know, we, we may think that we're too busy. We may make excuses for, you know, well, I got it, my family. No, make sure your relationship with Jesus Christ is on a solid foundation, first of all. Because if it's not on a solid foundation, then everything else will flow out of that. So if your foundation is shaky, if your foundation is built on sand, it's going to flow out of that. It's not going to produce fruit.
Something has blocked your flow of God's spirit. Amen. What blocks our fellowship with Christ? Simply put, it's sin. Amen. It's sin. When we continue in flagrant sin and refuse to repent, the gardener has to pick us up off the ground and clean us off, remove the blockage and put us back on the trellis. You know, and that happens too with, with, with fruit. You know, if it's, if it's not, you know, hung up properly or if it's on a trellis like I mentioned here, you know, and it's the leaves are on the ground and they get muddy and they get full of dirt, it doesn't really have time to uh, cultivate correctly and produce the fruit and the nutrients from the sun uh, like it should. And that's what happens when sin is in our lives. We're like, it's, we're like in the dirt. We're, we're blocking the flow of the Spirit of God trying to move freely in our lives. And if we are in Christ and not bearing fruit, we have to see what's blocking that flow. Much like when there's a problem of circulation, we may need a bypass or as many call it, a stint, right? Or our arteries are cleaned out. The same in our spiritual condition. What is blocking the Spirit's work in us? Now, it would not necessarily be a good thing to have a bypass because that is only avoiding dealing with the problem. Amen? Or the stint. So definitely, what should we do? We should be purged of sin in our lives. We should be cleaned of it. Amen? What does Jesus' blood do in our lives? It washes us clean. He died on that cross for the sin in our lives. Amen? Not so that we can cultivate in sin, amen, but to cultivate in the Spirit. So where are you sowing? Amen, because where you sow, that's what fruit you're going to produce. That's the type of fruit you will produce. If you're sowing to the Spirit, man, you're going to produce the fruit of righteousness, amen, and all those other things that come along with it. If you sow fruit uh, or sow seed to the flesh, then Everything out of that, again, it's going to flow from that. Hebrews chapter 12, and uh, you can just follow along with me. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the Father, or the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have not, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. By him for whom the Lord loves, it says he chastens. Amen. And scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening or without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be subject to the father of spirits and live for they indeed for a few days few days chastened us as seemed best to them but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness it says now no chastening seems joyful for the present but painful 
Nevertheless, afterward, what does it say here? It yields what? The peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So abiding in Christ, abiding in the vine, amen? Abiding in Him means that there's going to be pruning that's going to take place in your life. Again, nobody ever said, and if someone did tell you this, they were totally wrong. Nobody ever said it was going to be easy to be a Christian. Amen? Nobody ever said, or Jesus definitely did not say, if you follow me, it's going to be, you know, uh, roses and rainbows and unicorns and all that stuff. No, he didn't say any of that. Amen? He said, the world hated me first. It's going to hate you. But rejoice because I will overcome the world. But Jesus is telling us, he's given us an example of what it looks like to abide in him. Amen. Just as a father disciplines his children, so the father disciplines us. What's the problem? We don't like to be disciplined. Who here likes discipline? Who here likes to give discipline? Some of you guys are like, I do. <laughs> well, make them listen to me. No, you know what? It's just, it's, it's a part of growing up. Amen. If you're never disciplined, if you join the military and you don't follow the rules, okay, you're out. You're not going to last. You're not going to make it. I mean, you're going to ring that bell. You know, for the elite in the military, if you're a Navy SEAL, man, if you don't go through that first set of, uh, uh, you know, when they're in their training camp, man, you just, you, you're quit. You're done. You know, it takes discipline. It takes understanding how to get there. And then what do you do from that? From the time, from, from discipline, you grow from it. You grow from it. The problem is, though, many don't want to grow. Many, as soon as discipline hits, it's like they, they revert back. I don't know, it's kind of strange. You know, you once thought like a child, but now you should, you know, and you're drinking milk as a child, but you should move on to solid food. And that's the problem. Many followers of Christ, they don't move on to the solid food. Amen. So thus for, it prevents them from producing the fruit. The fruit of righteousness, amen? Endure. Be trained by it. If we are bearing some fruit, God wants us to bear more fruit. Do you know that? If you're bearing fruit right now for Christ, God wants you to bear more. Now think about it. You plant, who here has like fruit trees or anything like that in their yard? Anybody. Okay. Okay. Now, really, like, you got fruit trees. I mean, you go out there and you can harvest them. You got fruit trees. That's what I mean when I say, who has fruit trees? Okay. Or who has, a, a you know, some twigs out there that were fruit trees? <laughs> right? Uh, man, so when it's producing fruit for those that do know how to tend to the fruit, all right, <laughs> Now, when, when it's producing fruit, do you get excited when you see it? Yeah, that's the whole point of why you probably planted it that planted that uh, that fruit tree or or whatever that was, right? Vegetables, you know, um, you get excited about it. I mean, we planted a garden over at the house, and um, it's doing all right. Okay, it, it's doing okay. Um, some things are producing, other things aren't. It's just I think it's a learning process. Okay, of how to tend to it correctly, when to plant it, you know, when exactly to, to cut things off and all that kind of stuff. You know, but you get excited, right, when you see a piece of fruit. So, like, you know, I can have my, um, my granddaughter or my grandson over, and, and if I let them go over there to where the fruit is or the vegetables, you know, it can barely be coming out. And they'll probably, and I try and keep, we try and keep them away from there. They really don't go over there. I can just imagine if they go over there, they're going to see the, the stuff and they're going to what? Pick it right away, right? And we're like, no, it's not ready yet. You know, but we get excited about it. So 
As soon as that fruit comes through, man, you're like, man, I'm looking forward to the next batch. So you go out there and you start tending to the soil a little bit better than you were. You know, you start watering a little bit more if it needs more water. You know, you start caring for it and, and tilling the ground and doing whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that it's, it's producing the fruit that you expected it to produce. And see, when we become followers of Jesus Christ, there's an expectation that Christ has on us that, you know what, if you call yourself a follower of Christ, you will produce fruit. You know, I had a, a, a co-worker of mine talking about, you know, how, you know, he doesn't consider himself a, a Catholic, you know, and his family is real religious uh, Catholic um, because he doesn't, he doesn't go to church, right? So he's like, I can't be hypocritical, so I, I don't consider myself, you know, even though I can call myself that, right? He's like, I just, I just choose not to because I recognize that I'm not, you know. So he recognizes the truth of you know, the state that he's in. And I said, yeah, you know, that's true. You know, it's just like you going to McDonald's doesn't make you a cheeseburger, right? Just because you go there you, doesn't mean you're a cheeseburger. You're never going to be a cheeseburger. Just because you're in church doesn't mean that you are truly a follower of Christ. You have to produce the fruit. So, in order to bear fruit, how does, the, how does He accomplish this in us? How does Christ produce more fruit in us? Amen? Because we can produce no fruit of ourselves, okay? It's not what we can do, it's what He does in us when we, when we give ourselves to Him, when we recognize Him as being what we need and who we need. Amen? It's by pruning us. Amen? And how does He prune us? He may move us, okay? He may move you from one neighborhood to another neighborhood because the neighborhood that you're in is keeping you down. He may have us change jobs. How many of you have ever... That was like, man, you know, that was a pruning process. Something was holding you down there. That happened to me. Something was holding me down in a certain job that I was in. It was a long time ago, but man, if I would have stayed there, man, I would have been even, I would have been, it would have been terrible. All right, it was already terrible. He may even change our neighbors. He may change your friends. He may even humble us like he did with Jonah to bring us to someone else or to somewhere else. But the pruning is also like refining us, amen? Bringing us closer to Him. Helping us cut away the things that will hinder us. James chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 says this, because you know that the testing of your faith develops what? Perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You know, you hear the prosperity preachers preaching all the time. If you're in a lack, you know, it's because you just don't have enough faith because you got to give a little bit more. No, that's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about perseverance. He's talking about, he's talking about maturity. He's talking about, you know, going through the fire, going through that refining process and where you come out of it and who you put your trust in. See, the prosperity preachers, they're telling you put your trust in your finances. You know, if you just give a little bit more, if you give your last penny, God's going to bless you with it. I mean, they're really, they're putting their faith in that person that's telling them this, okay? They're not putting their faith in God because if they were, they would go to God's word and know what God's word says about it. But it says, perseverance must finish its work so that you may be what? Mature. There's a lot of immature Christians out there. And it says, and, and not just to be mature, but to be complete. To be complete. 
You know, there are a lot of people that say, you know, I just don't feel like like I'm complete or I don't feel like, you know, my life is fulfilled or, or you know, I, I, I feel like there, there's just so much lack in my life or, you know, there's all these excuses. Man, when the, when the trials come in your life, when the hard times come in your life, how do you respond to them? Because in that process is where God is trying to teach you something. So that when you can go through that, having complete trust and faith in Him, and not in your circumstance, not in who can bail me out of this situation, not in any of that, but God alone, that's when you can come to that place of completeness, lacking nothing. Even though maybe in the world's eyes you're, oh, well, you're not, you know, you're not wealthy enough, or, or, or you don't have the best house, or, or, you know, you're not in the best neighborhood, or whatever that is, or you're, you're not the most educated person out there. You don't have to be. That's why Jesus picked the people that he picked to be his disciples. He picks people like me. He picks people like you. Not because we all have it all together. <laughs> Far from it, right? So when God prunes us, we can either grow from it or what we do is we complain. You're either going to grow or you're going to complain. You're going to murmur. You know, you know, you walk away um, when, when the stuff is happening, just like talking behind, you know. You know, my my 13-year-old does that sometimes. You know, when I'm tying him something, he walks away mumbling. Like, what'd you say? Nothing. I'm like, yes, you did. You're complaining. Who's gone through that? <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah. If you have children, you're going through it. <laughs> okay? okay. It, it, and if you have, like, the best well-behaved children and they don't do that, man, bring them over to my house and everybody else's house over here that has kids and let them learn from that child. Amen? But Paul saw his gain in the worldly as a loss before God. And his loss in the worldly as a gain before God. He prunes us to grow us. Amen. So where are we in relation to the vine? Are we connected to the vine? If not, we must give ourselves over to Christ. We must give ourselves over to him. Are we growing personally? Are you personally growing in your relationship with Him? And this is a, on a personal level. This is your devotion time. This is you by yourself with Jesus. This isn't you with your, your wife and, or you with your kids or, or you here at the church or you with, with pastor, you know, during a meeting. You know, I'm not talking, I'm talking about are you taking the time to grow? in your relationship with Him. You know, I, I, I have another co-worker that was telling me the other day that, um, and, and I was kind of wondering, you know, he, he, he gets to the office really early, um, or actually normal time, but he stays till like 8 p.m. at the office, like every day, right? And, and I said, man, you know, how, how does it work with you when you go home? And I know you got a family, you got a wife and kids, he's all, so, you know, it, it's getting to the point where, like, there's really no communication. I said, well, maybe you need to dial back that time. You know, trying to try to try to win that time back with your spouse. And if we're so busy doing everything else, the point is, if we're so busy everywhere else, in everything else, and not with Him, not with Christ, not with your personal relationship. Again, um, being a Christian is not a religious thing. Okay? It's a relational thing. It's all about relationship. If you're the only one on the face of this planet, that's why he left the 99 for the one. Because he cares about the one. He cares about you in Him. He cares about the corporate 
body of believers, of course. You know, the assembling of ourselves together. But He cares about you and Him. Him and you. Your relationship. Where is it at? Are you connected? If not, you must give yourself over to Him. If you're not growing personally, you know, we need a cleaning out. Something's blocking the artery. Something's stopping the flow. Something's keeping the nutrients, right, from getting to where they need to get. When you hear the Word of God, you're like that person that when the enemy comes, he snatches that word out. And you, and you can never grow. Because you're so worried about everything else that's going on. You're so worried about everything else that's going on around you, except for your condition and your relationship with Him. Man, get that right. And if you don't, you're going to continue having a weak relationship with God. And the thing is, God is not a weak God. <laughs> I mean, He's so powerful, He's so big, but we make Him like this. You know, He's like a little God in our lives, right? And He's not that at all. But when people see your life and see the type of fruit that we produce, I mean, what do they see? Do they see the Jesus of the Bible? Do they see the God of all creation? Do they see the one that, that created the heavens and the stars and, and everything that we see here? Or do, do they see the actions of someone who has not matured? Do they see the actions of someone who's bearing poor fruit, unacceptable fruit? Do they see the actions of someone that's withered up and is good for nothing that other than to be cast out and burned up. What are they seeing? And this is where we're at today. We're in this state of what do people see? You know, many will say, well, you know, the, the president calls himself a Christian and, and look at his actions. And they're looking to a man. Why? Because he's on this platform, right? And it's a huge platform. And yes, pray for that man. Amen. Pray for all these other political people out there. We should be praying for them. And the thing is, none of us is going to ever be perfect. Okay? Don't, we should strive for perfection. Amen. That's what Scripture tells us. Strive for perfection. Doesn't mean that you're perfect. Doesn't mean that you're better than everybody else. And if you carry that attitude around with you, you know, and you're in here and you're watching online, and you're saying, you know, and, and that's who you are. That's how you, you know, that, that, that's like rotten before God's eyes. You know, I'm better than everybody else. You know, I'm a better Christian than them. No, you're miserable without Christ. And only because of Christ and what he did on the cross are you able to be anything. Amen. Amen? That's it. Are we growing corporately? If not, maybe we need to see if, they're, if we're still connected to the vine. If we're not growing corporately, we need to see, we need to check that out. Or if we need to change direction in the way we do things. Amen? I mean, it, we're, we're living in unprecedented times. You know, I hate using that word. You know, everybody throws that word out there. You know, these are these are... You know, unprecedented times. You know, I'm sure, you know, 30 years ago when people were going through stuff, they were going through, it was unprecedented times for them. Okay? I'm sure in biblical times, uh, it was unprecedented times for them too. Okay? We live in a corrupt society. We've been in a corrupt society ever since the fall of man. And we still haven't gotten it right. <laughs> And we're still looking to everybody else and everything else that's out there instead of to the one that showed us the way. Amen. Instead of to the one that said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to come down here. I'm going to have to show you guys. I'm going to have to teach you guys. And, and, and I'm literally going to die on the cross for your sins. 
because none of you are good enough. You know, nothing that's been done in the past was good enough. This is it. And the more we look to that, the more we look to him, amen, the more we allow him to teach us. And again, it comes down to a personal growing relationship with Christ. I mean, this is this as simple as that sounds, everybody. As simple as that sounds, those words that come out of my mouth, as simple as they sound, you just need to grow in a personal relationship with Christ. It's also one of the hardest things to do because you have everything fighting for your loyalty, everything fighting for your allegiance. You know, time is something that we can never get back. But that's our greatest commodity is time. The, the, the most that we have of is time. How are you spending your time? We need to seek his will, amen? Amen. Trying to do our will in his name results in failure. Trying to do our will in his name results in failure. How many of you guys ever, you know, done things for God, but you did it on your own, your own strength? You know, you had an idea, maybe it was a good idea, you know, but you just you didn't pray about it, you didn't seek the Lord's direction for it, you just kind of went in and did it. Right, and you stayed there, and then you got miserable there, and you're like, oh man, this isn't working. I need to try something else. This Christian stuff isn't working. There's many, many people who have fallen away because they tried it on their own. It was never a commitment, it was never a partnership, it was never a relationship. Amen. You you can't do it without marrying it to it. You understand? It's not like, uh, you know, we're, we're just in a dating relationship. It's not, you know, it's a marriage. When you're with Christ, it's a marriage. He is the groom. We are the bride. Amen? That's why he says we're the bride of Christ. Now, how does a, a, a bride, you know, Treat a groom, and how does a groom treat a bride? Faithful to each other, communicating with each other, growing together, growing old together, knowing what each other's likes are, what each other's dislikes are, knowing what buttons are pushed, right? Knowing what pushes our buttons. That's a relationship. That's where we need to be. We need to be in relationship with him. Trying to do it on our own is going to result in failure. You're going to mess up. You're going to cheat on your bride, on your spouse. And it'll happen every time. And you're going to feel guilty. And many people, when they feel that guilt, they never get back to the commitment that they made. Why? Because it wasn't really a commitment. It was just uh, possibly an emotional reaction to a sermon that they heard when they were at church and they said a prayer. And they really probably felt it at that moment, but they never entered into relationship. But doing His will in His name will always result in success. I want to do God's will. I want to do it for Him. I want Him to do it through me. Man, you're going to be successful at that. It's going to take a few times to to get it right, okay? You're not going to be perfect. But again, it's the pruning process. You understand? If you mess up, you get up. Amen. If you mess up, you get up. Now, don't keep messing up in the same area because that's just straight up disobedience to God and you're taking advantage of the grace of God. That's not what the grace of God is for. 
Amen. So he is the vine. We are the branches. Apart from him, it says that we can do what? Nothing. Apart from Christ, we can do. Apart from the vine, we can do nothing. We can do nothing. So we can either get on the vine or we can get burned in the fire. Amen? The choice is ours. The choice is yours. The choice is yours watching online. And what will you choose today? What is it that you will choose today? Amen? Why don't we stand up? I know it's a little shorter than usual, but again, there's some things that we didn't have this morning, but we're here nevertheless. And I, I, I pray to God that His Word um, would do something in your life, and, and it does. It does. You know, the, the Word of God goes out to do what it was set out to do. It's what His Word says. It doesn't return void. Amen. It either falls on good ground or it falls on bad ground, okay? And if, all, if it falls on the bad ground, it's not going to produce fruit. But if you allow His Word and if you allow what He's saying here to do something in your life, I'm going to tell you what, you're going to produce good fruit. And when you start seeing that good fruit being produced, you're going to get excited, you know, and keep moving forward because you'll produce much fruit at that point. That's what he wants out of our lives. He wants good things for you. Nothing but good things he wants for you. Amen. The only reason why we don't have good things happening in our lives is because we're still here. This stuff still gets in the way, all of it. My hand just got in the way there. You know, but if we choose, amen, to say yes to Christ, if you're watching online and you haven't done that, I, I pray that you do that this morning. I pray that you see yourself for who you are. You're not, we're, we're nothing. And I had to come to that realization in my life. I had to realize I'm nothing without Him. And every one of us in here has to make that decision too or has made that decision to say, you know what? I'm nothing without Him. I need you, Jesus. Back in Hebrews again, chapter 12, it says, Therefore we also, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, so people have gone through this, amen? People have learned from this. You know, maybe you have people in your lives that, you know, that you can um, attach yourself to, amen, that will help you in a growing process. And that's the thing. Some of us think that we can do it on our own. You know, sometimes that's why people don't grow, because they think we can do it on our own. I don't need help. Oh, I don't need anybody else. I'll just go on Sundays. I'll go to church and I'll hear the, I'll hear, I'll hear the preacher. You know, that's where my growth is going to come from. No, it takes more than that. It takes you realizing your need. Amen? Surround yourself. Whenever there's something going on, get there. Whenever someone offers to help you, go get that help. If it's not being offered, ask for it. Amen? I encourage you. Sometimes we, we miss things. You know, sometimes we can put on such a good mask, you know, that we don't realize what's really going on in people's lives. And we miss out on the opportunity to minister and, and to pour into their lives. And that's what we're called to do. Amen. We're called to encourage each other, to lift each other up. Amen. Are we doing that? That's a part of the process here. Amen. But let's look unto the author and finisher of our faith the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Amen. And again, let whatever's going on in your life, maybe you're going through a difficult time right now. Maybe that's that, it's that dry season. You know, maybe it's the, it's the season of fruitlessness. And, and you're saying, you know what? I want to produce fruit. I want to be fruitful for God. It, it takes you having to let go of some stuff. And if that stuff, you can, you can identify it right here and right now. And you're saying, you know what? I, I know what it is. I know what I'm doing that's keeping me from Him. I know what that is. And, and, and you know it. I know we, you know it. 
especially if you're a, if you're a believer, you know that. You know what it is. And if you're not a if you're not a follower of Christ, you know God is showing you right now. The Holy Spirit is is tugging at you. He's he's showing you some things, and he's saying, "Come to me. Get rid of that." The only way you can get rid of that is by giving it to me, trading it, trade it in for what I've done for you. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, I just pray this morning, Lord, that you would just help those to make a decision today, Lord. Those watching online that don't know you, that God have never given their lives over to you, Jesus, but they see that they want to produce good fruit, Lord, and, and the things that have been going on in their lives right now, or that they're in right now, uh, they're recognizing them for what they are, and, and it's not good. And, and it's driven them away from you. Lord God, they want to get close to you. I pray that they would make a decision for you today. God, help them, Lord, to see their condition for what it really is, Lord. They're lost without you. But God, making a decision for you, God, would, would just totally transform the course of their lives. And Lord, for those of us that are in here, Lord God, that have made a decision, have made a commitment. Maybe that commitment's kind of gotten a, a little off. God, help us to get back on, on the right path. Lord, you, you show us, Lord. You reveal things to us, Lord. Help us, God, to receive your word, God, when we hear it, Lord, and help it to produce good fruit in us, Lord. Help us to be that, that type of soil, Lord, that, that is, is, is good soil, Lord. That way your word can be planted there, Lord, and it would grow and produce and produce and produce the fruit that you want to produce in it. For us that are struggling, Lord, um, just daily remind us of who you are and our need for you. We ask, Lord, that you continue with us, Lord, and, and that you continue to grant us your favor, Lord God. You, you're so gracious towards us, Lord, even though we don't deserve it, even though we're far Far, far from being anything like you, Lord God, we strive to be like you. Forgive us, Lord, anything that is in us that is not of you. Any ideas, any thoughts, Lord God, that may have uh, just, we, we've given ourselves over to things, Lord. Help us to get rid of those things, Lord Jesus, and to draw closer to you. We ask these things in your name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Give God praise this morning. I appreciate you guys, every one of you. Make sure you guys be safe um, and, again, grow. Grow, produce fruit. Amen.